The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the X Zone, everyone. My good friend Corey Kay is with us this hour as we do another edition, our weekly edition of the X-Zone Tech Zone at www.xzonetechzone.com. And Corey Kay, my good friend, nice talking to you. How are things in beautiful Florida tonight? Oh, excellent. But the lightning and thunder is definitely in full effect today. Really? Hey, how did you make out with that uh, hurricane? When was it, last week or the week before? Yeah, we were lucky. It was a lot of rain on the Mm -hmm. East Coast, which I'm not on, but we have relatives there. And uh, they were okay, just a little wet. But I heard North Carolina got a little wallop. Wow. Anyway, uh, we're always glad that we're talking to Corey. And, uh, you know, whenever I see or hear of bad weather down there, I know you're there. My thoughts and prayers are always with you and your family. We are talking about quantum computing this uh, segment of the show, Corey. And what is quantum computing? Well, we are really going to the, blow the mind of the Exxon Nation today. Quantum computing blends computer engineering with quantum mechanics. Ooh. And before I even get started, I should mention that Richard Feynman, who was uh, a famous quantum theorist, said, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. But um, it will make computers infinitely faster than anything we can conceive of today. And it will allow us to upload data to the cloud instantly, which is a big difference uh, compared to today when we have a lot of lag times. And um, much of the best work right now in quantum computing is actually being conducted in Canada. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a company called D-Wave Systems based in Burnaby, British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And in May 2011, they announced the D-Wave 1 computer, which was uh, they are calling the world's first commercially available quantum computer. And then there is a famous quantum cryptologist who is probably the best in the world. And he's in Canada also. I think he's in uh, Waterloo. Uh, that, that's funny because Waterloo, uh, Kitchener Waterloo, which is uh, it's just west and north of Toronto, it's about only thirty five miles from where we are here in Hamilton, is is the home of the BlackBerry. Oh my gosh, that's right. Yeah, yeah research in motion. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, Corey, you're, you're saying that the transfers will be instantaneously instantaneous to the cloud, which is nothing else but a, a group of servers at a specified location. That's right. It will be able to do everything faster. And the main mechanism by which we'll be able to do everything faster is through quantum memory. And I'll tell you how quantum memory is different than the memory we have today. Right now, mm-hmm. all memory that we use It processes everything in sequences of zeros and ones. But what's really mind-blowing with quantum memory is with quantum memory, you can have zeros and ones being processed at the same time. 
every step along the way on these new quantum memory chips, you can actually have two zeros being stored at the same time, a zero and a one, a one and a one, any combination. Wow. And that sounds a little crazy, but it makes everything a lot faster. So is, is this actually going to be the end of the binary system as we know it? It won't be 100% the end of the binary system mm -hmm. because we'll still be thinking in terms of zeros and ones. Right. But we'll actually have two or possibly even more sets of zeros and ones at the same time, all in parallel. So we're just going to have multiple sets of zeros and ones. It'll be almost like digital, digital to start with. So will this also have an effect on the on the speed of the core processor, the amount of memory that is required, or will that actually will that actually decrease the amount of memory that is required? I've seen it go both ways. Mm -hmm. Some of these early quantum computers that they're developing now, they're going to um, basically be measured as 512 bit memory, which is a decrease from what we're using mm -hmm. today. So it's just like you said, at first we'll have small quantities of memory doing a lot more, but as time goes on, we will have the capability to use just an astronomical amount of memory. I remember being impressed recently with workstation computers that can handle 256 gigs worth of memory at once, wow. which this sounds fascinating to me, but with quantum computing, we're going to move many times beyond that. So are we going to see plasma being used into computers as well? You know, I'll have to look into that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. All right, Corey, stand by, buddy. You and I have to take our first commercial break, www.xzonetechzone.com. Visit Corey's uh, forum, and uh, we'll both be back on the other side of this commercial break. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at Elizabeth.Joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Have a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, 
and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Corey Kay is our special guest this hour, Exxon Nation, www.xzonetechzone.com. We're talking about quantum computing, and I've got to tell you something, Corey. This is truly exciting. It is, and right now, Google and the NSA are actively developing big quantum computers. Um, before I get into that, I should explain a little bit of the theory behind it. In quantum theory, you have subatomic particles, mm -hmm. and they can have two different states at the same time, but that's only if you're not looking at them. As soon as you look at these particles dead on, you don't have two states. It all collapses into one state or another, and... There was a famous scientist, which I'll remember his name later, but he called this the observer effect. And um, that has been the main difficulty with quantum theory so far. As soon as you look directly at what you're studying, the effect disappears. And we're, that is one of the reasons also that mm -hmm. it has taken us so long to build a quantum computer because this quantum memory that I've been telling you about, right. if I were to look directly at it, I couldn't have two zeros or two ones simultaneously. And to even be able to measure um, this memory and its effectiveness, they are having to find different particles that are indirectly related to this memory. And they're studying the memory through its effect on these other almost third-party particles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Corey, Corey, wasn't the observer effect also referred to as the Hawthorne effect? That could be, yeah. And the yeah. Hawthorne effect is um, the actual observer affects the outcome of mm -hmm. the experiment. So they're definitely related. Yeah, because I, I remember hearing about that uh, before. And uh, we had somebody on last year who said, watch what's going to be happening in the future. And bang, the future's here. So That's amazing. It, how will this affect the, 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 the computers that people are using at work? Will it increase productivity? It will. It will increase productivity. And something that a lot of data scientists don't want to talk about publicly because they don't want to cause a panic is data Armageddon. And data Armageddon is the idea that we as a society are using so much data now. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly video data that's the, the big hog. But we're using so much data on so many devices in so many places and we're trying to synchronize it all and we're actually starting to get to the point where we could use up the available capacity and people will actually want to use more data than what we can make available to them and it's been the big fear among data scientists but with quantum computing we almost don't have to worry mm -hmm. about that anymore um, as long as we're talking about the size and shape of data as it exists right now if we use a quantum computer we can store almost an uh, infinite amount of data it seems mm -hmm. and i guess the only potential downside is once these quantum computers become widespread if we start quantizing the data that we store then we could run into trouble but it temporarily solves what could have been a, a big problem big enough to call it data armageddon but but in reality can you can you actually see the the larger computer companies and the data carriers actually allowing that to happen i always thought that the the carriers and those who provide the space for data were always ahead of the game to avoid such a thing. 
Yeah, it, it is a big game changer. And I'll tell you something that we should definitely be concerned.